Oh yeah, Doritos, mild cheddar dip, and coffee. It was for breakfast. All right, let's get started. What you got, Molly? Whopper ploppers. Yay, more whopper ploppers. Okay. That's not what's going on this morning, though. Good morning, everybody. Um, I've been getting a lot of inquiries about how I do a hot tuna pattern, and specifically about how I lay over the pellin, Wonderweb. So going to use it this morning but I'm not going to put it on a whopper plopper we're going to put it on um, I'm just going to do a 2 2.5 make this as simple as I can for you guys all right let's give it a whirl I don't need this much, but it happens to be what's hanging over. So we're going to wrap it up. And I guess it would be a good idea if I showed you what this is. So this is Pellin. 807 is called Wonder Web. It's fusible web. This is meant for things like quilt backing, um, different things of that nature for fabrics. Um, fusible webs replaces sewing or gluing. So that means that when you heat it with an iron, um, or in our case, we're gonna heat set it to the bait after we're finished doing the overlay. You'll see that at, towards the end of this video. Um, it'll, it'll stick, it gets tacky. And as you lift it up off the bait, it takes the, uh, the pattern of a very cool netting webbing. Um, at this point, I'm gonna introduce a picture right here of a finished product and then we'll we'll finish this one as well um, but it's it's a really neat it's a little tricky to work with it's a, but it's a really neat type of an application for the bait but before we do any of the stuff with the pellin uh, we need to put our base layers on this so I'm going to choose fluorescence that seems to work best with my hot tuna pattern um, it, it is an exclusive pattern you guys are welcome to try it um, I, I, I welcome you guys to to experiment with this craft. It's I love doing it. This is what I do. Um, but please, if you have any questions, uh, any comments, link those below in the description area, and uh, I'll get to as many questions as I can. Okay, well, I've selected the paints that I'm going to use for this particular bait. Um, it is a hot tuna pattern, and the hot usually uh, that references fluorescence. So I'm, I'm just doing some simple Createx paints. Some of you guys like this stuff, some of you don't. Um, a lot of people think of it as an entry-level paint, and there's plenty more out there. There's the Aztec testers. There's all kinds of stuff that you can use, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to go real simple. Um, I actually like Createx, and I think there's a lot you can do with it, but what I've learned over the period of time that I've been spray painting with an airbrush is that a lot of it has to do with control and reduction. Um, Createx is pretty cool. Um, you don't normally need to reduce it a whole lot. It comes out, uh, it comes out just fine the way it is. The things that I've had to reduce over the years have been the opaques. Opaque white is one of them. This is the toughest white to work with that I've ever worked with, ever, ever. Uh, this needs a good bit of reduction in order for it to lay properly. 
on plastic. So just, just to be clear, I'm not even going to do a base coat of white this morning. Um, a lot of the times I don't. Some people say that it does bring out the truer colors of this stuff better. And it does. Um, but it's not necessary, at least for me, for using fluorescence. Fluorescents are pretty bright to begin with. And they keep a lot of their true nature uh, and color on the bait when, when you don't put a white down. So... I've already taped. I used just regular 3M or whatever's uh, inexpensive at the time to tape off the bill. You want to get the bill real tight. Uh, I see some folks that they'll just stop the tape here and then you get that real wild line like there's that straight line in the bait and, and it just, eh, for me at least, it's not professional. It doesn't look good. So take the extra couple of minutes and do the corners on the bill of your bait. That's just, just my, maybe it's OCD, but that's just the way I do it. Um, I like for it to look as clean and professional as possible. And if you notice on, on most of the better baits, like the Lucky Crafts and things of the, the, that nature, um, the bill is completely clear. So a couple seconds extra, make the effort. You're really going to like the way the bait looks better. I promise. Okay. That's a little bit high, but I'm going to clear my chamber. This is at 30. I'm going to bring that back to 20 to spray the, the base colors on this. Um, but one of the things that I do, maybe you guys do it, maybe you don't. Maybe this is just my way of making sure I stay clean, is that I leave a little bit of cleaning solution in the chamber. So that when I start a project, I want to make sure that I have decent flow and that paint hasn't been able to harden if I was a little sloppy, which I'm usually not. I'm usually pretty meticulous about keeping this clean as I go. Um, but it, it's just a little extra, extra measure of protection to make sure that I have real good flow when I start out. Okay. Here's our 2.5. I'm going to start out with probably my lighter colors and get darker as I go along. So this is just a random, kind of like a, a random splatter pattern. The other thing that I'm going to do is make sure that all the gunk and hardened paint is not in that because I don't want to take any chance of clogging this airbrush chamber. This is an Awada Eclipse. This is the HPCS. I like it a lot. It's not the most expensive out there, but it is a very good every day. It's held up for a very long time. No issues. Super easy to clean. I just like this. It's a great brush. The other thing I do is I always shoot out a couple of shots just to make sure that all the cleaner is out of this, this chamber. So I'm just going to make some random splatter here. And the one underneath. And then just hit that at a lower pressure. And go back over it. Just so that I have enough. Now I've got plenty of yellow. There's other colors are going to be adding into this. I always turn the pressure back up when I'm cleaning the chamber. And what you're going to notice, and the biggest question that I get about this pattern is the wet on wet technique. Um, what that means is that I'm not going to heat set any of my colors in between colors. That doesn't sound right, about blending colors together. The easiest way that I know to explain it is that I'm not heat setting this after each color I put on this bait. I'm not going to heat set this until I have all of my colors on here. What that does, now it's going to dry a little bit, you know, the air dry, but not much because there's really only maybe a minute between colors. 
uh, just long enough for me to clean off and clean out the chamber. Well, that's probably too much paint. But again, I, I shoot it just enough. Let me turn this back down. Usually when I'm cleaning the colors out, I'll turn it back up to about 30. But then when I'm laying this on, I really only want max 20. And again, this is a very random pattern. It, you guys don't have to follow this exact pattern. Just put random splotches of paint, fluorescent, on the these. one consistent color that you're going to find in all of my hot tuna patterns is the fluorescent pink. That's sort of why I got the name hot tuna. Little fluorescent blue. Now I don't use a heat gun. I use a very tired old Conair. Um, still super hot though. Uh, I usually heat set for about a minute, a minute to a minute and a half. Um, if I know that the paints that I'm working with, like the opaque whites, opaques tend to crack a little bit more, then I'll set it down in between. Now I could use a heat gun. I have a heat gun. Um, I, eh, don't really need to. What I have here is a section of Palin Wonderweb, fusible backing, and a bunch of alligator clips. I'm going to lay this over. I can do it like this. I have enough. It's a wide enough swath of this. The first piece that I put down is the nose piece. I want to clip that. And I think maybe, and I could be wrong, so again, please comment. Um, on, on this video below I think maybe this the problem that you guys are running into is that you're not getting this tight enough it's really got to be on here tight for it to be effective um, so that that may be an issue and this is actually gonna get tighter than that um, the other thing that I'm gonna do because we're gonna do this in two sections we're gonna do the top and the sides on this application and then we're going to flip it over and I'm going to do this as well. And you can see there's just a little bit of cracking that really isn't going to matter on this because there's going to be a black Pelin overlay spray, light spray, that's going to knock that out. That's not going to be there. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull this over the bill as tight as I can. Put the alligator clips on both sides. Again, you've got to get this stuff super, super tight for it to be effective and for you to get the effect that you want on it. On the underside of the bait, where your first hook would go, you want to pull this up as tight as you can. And the cool thing about this stuff, and I don't use dryer sheets. I know that some of you guys have used dryer sheets. It does kind of have the same mesh effect um, as this. But these just kind of, you can pull them and get them tight and then they'll adhere to that. And then when you have the excess, I'm just going to go ahead and snip that off. Because again, the, the name of the game on this, I need sharper scissors. These things are old and tired, kind of like me. The name of the game is getting this as tight as you can without ripping it. And then bring do the same thing pull that as tight as you can on the other side and then we're going to go ahead and clip it keep that in place so and I know that that's true on on any of the meshing that you get and if you see a little bit that's come up you can probably go ahead and incorporate that and then just reset this there we go and then we're going to trim off the excess on that as well don't want to over wrap your bait
Okay, now for the back end, it's the same principle. But I wanted to take the time to show you how I get this stuff tight. Now with this, what I what I normally like to do, and I should be able to do it fairly successfully here, so I'm going to go ahead and twist this. And twisting it is going to put a little bit more pressure. Yeah, you're going to get a couple of lines and creases, but you can spray that out. Again, it's not a it's not a big deal, and it actually kind of looks cool, um, or it can. I've got one alligator clip left, so that's going to go like that. But again, you're gonna you're going to put another application on the bottom. So you can just you can get rid of all that in your next application. All right, we're set. Even strokes is the name of the game. I'm holding this probably four inches above. Very even strokes. Come back, hit the other side, hit the front. Okay, that's it. No more than two. It'll get too gummed up. Hot as you can get it. Keep this thing close. Remember, this is fusible material. You want it to get tacky, just not too tacky. You don't want it to stick. But you definitely want it to be tight. going to go about a minute on this. Alright, We've just finished heat setting. go from the nose back. There you have it folks. Now remember I said that you might get some creases in here. We've got some creases in here. That's okay. This is going to come out on the next application because we're going to turn around and do the bottom of this bait. There you go. Voila! So I want to take just a couple of seconds in this video, a few minutes maybe, and talk about what I use for clear coat. I've used DevCon, I've used two ton epoxies, I've used two part epoxies, I've, I've gone through them. I'm very happy with KBS Diamond Finish. I'm not sponsored by them. This in no means is, is an advertisement for them. But I do advocate the products that I really like to use. You either love this stuff or you hate it. I've heard a lot of complaints about this stuff. I'm trying to figure out why that is. A lot of folks say that you get bubbling on the, on the bait itself and in the eyes. Um, the only thing that I can talk to you about about that is... It's a power fisherman slowing down to a drop shot. So if you're used to crank baiting and going through baits at a pretty quick clip when you're clear coating, that's not going to happen. Um, I dip. I don't brush on unless it's a whopper plopper. Um, I, can, I have five of those to do today, so maybe I'll, at the end of this video, dip a whopper plopper and then brush because I, I have to use both processes on that. So maybe I'll show you that. Or maybe that's another video in itself. It's not going to take 45 minutes to watch. Clear diamond finish. It's a one application. It's not a mix. 
use this a glass jar doesn't have to be prego but this is great because it's long and you can dip jerk most jerk baits in there um, up to a, a 120 SP a, a duo so the pretty big and the visions fit comfortably in a full jar saran wrap keeps it from fusing the lid to the glass also helps keep it airtight the two biggest things that I hear go wrong with KBS is bubbles and, and that it hardens well, let me show you through no fault of the product every fault of mine this is what it looks like when it hardens and it hardens because I'm a knucklehead I've gotten junk in here uh, the chemical compound is real delicate in KBS that's one thing you guys need to know about that because I've called KBS I've asked them I've, I've trialed by fire on this one as well um, you can break through this um, and still continue to dip it and for di stuff that I'm dipping for myself I don't care if it's a little thicker um, but it's primarily it's much clearer but you can see the color change is going to happen when you start getting it mixed with junk there's I've lost um, the the pins in here that I use to hang baits so this stuff is in there glitters in there I've made mistakes and put clear coat on too quickly and dipped when I, my, my uh, Loctite or my Gorilla Glue on the eyes was still wet. So again, the chemical compound in this stuff is super delicate. My two rules, keep it airtight and slow your roll when you're dipping this stuff in. And if you follow those basic principles, you're not going to get the bubbles on there. Take the time to tilt your bait while it's in there and I'll show you how I do that. It's an awesome awesome product I love it I've used it I've cursed it but when I figured out how to do it right I will never use another product so we're gonna I've already used this once you guys can see that it's a little bit gummed up but we're gonna flip this around because you can still hang it so before I ever even open my KBS I'm gonna keep this as simple as I can for you guys that's going to keep it from moving around a whole lot. Then I'm also going to add this on. Now I can add it on after, but it just takes more time. And I'm going to loop it together so it doesn't fall off. That way I'll get a good hang. Drip wires on the bottom are important. Thank you, Michael Orstein. They're important because it allows that KBS or whatever epoxy you guys do use to just kind of naturally drip off. Pulls it down so you don't get globs at the base of your bait. All we're going to do now, dip it in slow. This glue is completely dried on the eyes and you don't want to use too much glue because it'll make the eyes look all junky. I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to make sure there's no bubbles around the eyes and on, on this one we're doing okay. There's not. And you can really see in this clear coat that's starting to pop. I don't know what kind of junk. There we go. Get that off of there. There we go. Pull it out fairly slow. This is about the consistency you should see it drip. If this stuff is thicker than this and you get that long stream, then the chemical makeup is starting to change composition. And then real quick, putting this back on, pushing that down, that kind of pulls the air out. Make sure you have a nice tight seal put that lid on real tight folks and that's going to preserve your KBS I'm telling you this stuff is wonderful I love it I've never had problems with it um, that I that wasn't my fault let's put it that way all right this is it folks this is what your bait should look like
thanks for watching. I hope I've answered your questions. I hope you've learned a little something. I learn something every time I collaborate with all of you. So, thanks for your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comment section below. Have a great day. Happy casting.